transcribed. Family Theater presents Pat O'Brien, Bobby Driscoll, Rita Johnson, and Stephen Dunn. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Courtship of John Dennis, starring Pat O'Brien, Bobby Driscoll, Rita Johnson, and Stephen Dunn. <laughs> Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we're to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, The Courtship of John Dennis, starring Pat O'Brien as John, Bobby Driscoll as Jimmy, Rita Johnson as Miss Christian, and Stephen Dunn as James. You might have seen a mention in your newspaper recently of a Mr. and Mrs. John Dennis celebrating their silver anniversary. Well, there's a story behind it. You see, John Dennis is my father, and it was I who inspired him to court Mrs. Dennis. In fact, I even did some of the courting. Does that sound a little strange? Well, as a matter of fact, it was. But suppose I tell you the whole story, and then you'll understand how such a thing could happen. Up until the beginning of the courtship, my father always impressed me as kind of a lonely man. He was kind of like his job. And as a policeman, he spent his working hours on fixed post, standing alone in the middle of a busy intersection, helping the world go by in an orderly fashion, but never trying to be part of the traffic himself. On the days when my father had early duty, I used to fix his lunch and take it to him on the way to school. What do we got today, Jim boy? We got the same thing. Two corned beef sandwiches, a banana, milk, and what was left of the apple pie. Corned beef, huh? Say, that sounds fine. Well, we may not be a big family, Jimmy, but we get along pretty well, don't we, fella? Yeah, I guess we do, Pop. Well, I guess I better be tending to business before they find out they can get along without me. It was at school that the courtship really began. I remember I was engaged in that wonderful childhood occupation of gazing through the window and allowing my mind to coast. James Dennis. James Dennis? Uh, oh, oh, yes, Miss Christian. Are you daydreaming again? Yes, Miss Christian. You know... It is rude of you to be looking out the window when I'm trying to teach you important things, James. Yes, ma'am. I know I've tried. I really have tried. But you look out of the window and you see a bird. There doesn't even have to be a bird, ma'am. Don't you want to grow up to be intelligent? Make your mother very proud of you? I don't have a mother, ma'am. My mother died just after I was born. Oh, I'm sorry, James. I suppose it can be very difficult for a boy when he has to do so many things for himself that would normally be taken care of by his mother. But some things must be done regardless. Yes, I believe that was the start of it. When she mentioned my need of a mother, I couldn't help adding her face to my small family portrait, thinking of her as an ideal companion for my father and a good mother for me, just the woman for the job. You're not going to let circumstances defeat you, are you, James? Are you, James? Huh? Uh, oh, yes, ma'am. I asked if you were going to let circumstances defeat you. Oh, no, ma'am. I swear, even when I'm talking to you, you seem to be a thousand miles away. I don't want to have to talk to your father about this. Well, maybe it'd be a good idea, ma'am. I, well, I mean, well, maybe the three of us could work something out. Of course, I'd like to meet your father, James, but I think we can handle it alone. Just remember, there are two kinds of people in this world, the dreamers and the doers. Which do you want to be? Oh, I want to be a doer, Miss Christian. Then will you promise me you'll try to pay attention in class? Promise you'll try for me? I'll do my best. Fine, James. That's all I ask. <laughs> And I did try. In fact, that very afternoon, I went directly home from school and spent hours just gazing into space, trying to think of ways of applying myself to the business of becoming a doer instead of a dreamer. She's right. You can think about something a long time, but that's not getting it done. But how am I going to do it? How am I going to get Miss Christian and Pop together? Of course, they, they may not like each other. 
Oh, sure they would. Say, maybe I could tell her about him. Tell her just how good a man he really is. He certainly sounds splendid from what you tell me, James. Oh, he is, ma'am. You should see him. Do you suppose I might? Take no time at all, ma'am. He's directing traffic right now at the Powell and Center Street intersection. Oh, is that your father? Yes, ma'am. That's my father. Oh, so handsome in his uniform and white gloves. That's so the drivers can see his directions better. Oh, James, tomorrow, why don't you... Yes, ma'am? Why don't you ask him to talk to me tomorrow about, let's say, about your daydreaming? Wouldn't that be a nice way for us to meet? Hey, that's a very good idea. Jim. Jim, boy, you home? I'm in here, Pop. Well, I thought you might be out playing a little baseball or hooping it up with the boys. I suppose you forgot we were going to meet at the station house. Yeah, I, I guess I did. And I think maybe you forgot to pick a place to eat tonight. You're right, Pop. You got something on your mind, Jimmy? Yeah, I guess I have. Well, is it a talking problem or a thinking problem? A talking problem. I'll be happy to listen, you know that. Pop, Miss Christian sure is Oh, swell. so you're going to be married, huh? You want some advice? Well, that's fine, just fine. Ah, oh, Pop. Turns you down, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, her judgment's poor. This is kind of serious. <laughs> All right, what is it? Miss Christian says I dream too much. Thought I had to be a, a doer instead of a dreamer. Oh, uh -huh. what else? That's all. That's all? That's all. Yeah, that's a lot of bunk. I'd like to make the acquaintance of this Miss Christian of yours. That's a good idea. You know, there's a time to do as well as a time to dream. I'll agree to that. But where does she think this world would be if people didn't dream a little? Well, she says that... Greatest exercise for the imagination in the world. I remember someone saying one time, a dreamer lives forever, but a toiler dies in a day. Jimmy? You ask your teacher what would be accomplished in this world if it weren't for men with imagination. Men like, like Columbus and Longfellow and Loyola and George Washington. Yes, and even Bret Hart. Come on, you ask her. A man's got to have a dream before he can make it come true. You tell her that, my boy. Why don't you tell her, Pop? Why don't I tell her? Well, she said she'd like to talk to you about it. Oh, well, she did. Well, kind of. What do you mean, kind of? Well, she said... She said she didn't want to have to talk to you about it. Oh, she did, did she? Well, I'll tell you. Well, how about I... tomorrow morning? Now, Jim, I, uh, I don't think, uh, well, I, I don't know as we should make a big thing out of all of this. Okay, Pop. If you don't want to, you don't want to. No, it's not that I don't want to, Jim. No, no, you don't have to. I'll get along somehow. No, you don't have to talk to her. All right, all right. Tomorrow morning before I go to work, we'll stop by and have a talk with her. Good enough. I think that'll be just fine. I remember the illusions I entertained regarding that first meeting between my father and Miss Christian. All of them had the same general form and, of course, a happy ending. Miss Christian, I'd like you to meet my father, Officer John Dennis. I'm so pleased to meet you, Officer Dennis. I'm pleased to meet you, Miss Christian. Now, Miss Christian, I'm a man of few words. I do so admire a man of few words. Good. So, I'm a lonely man. And my son should have a mother. So will you be my wife, Miss Christian? Your wife? And make Mr. our family three instead of only two, Miss Christian. Why, yes, I think so. I think I'd rather like that, Mr. Dennis. Splendid, Miss Christian, and it's all settled. It's all settled. Would tomorrow afternoon be all right for the wedding? It would not, Miss Christian. No. Why not now, Miss Christian? But unfortunately, the first meeting was not like that. No, it was not like that at all. Should you be here this time of the morning? She usually is. Here's his classroom. This door right here? No, it's the next one, Pop. Okay, lead the way. Mm. Nobody here, huh? Not yet, I guess. Uh, Jim. Yeah? Aren't these desks a little small? Not for me. A long time since I've been in one of these. Frightens me to think how long. Sit down, Pop. Try it out. Oh, I'd break it, Jimmy. No, you wouldn't. They're strong. Come on, try it. You know what I'd like to? Let me see. Oh. Pretty tight fit, but I, I guess I'm in. Uh. <laughs> Gee, I, I remember I carved my initials right here by the inkwell. It's been a long, long time. You do look kind of big in it. Uh, well, then, perhaps I better get out. Uh, wouldn't do for your Miss Christian to come in here and find she has a, a new, a new, 
Jim, I seem to be having a little trouble. Here, I'll give you a hand, Pop. When I try to move this way, catches me here, you see? Well, how about trying the other way? Oh, same thing, only it catches me on the other side. Well, how about up and down? Down wouldn't do a thing, and up... Uh-oh. Let me see. Is it much, Jim? Clear from the handcuffs to your nightstick, straight across. Oh, yikes, that's bad. How'd you get in, Pop? Same way I've been trying to get out, Jim. Oh, if I could lay my hands on the kind of man who'd make a desk this small, I think I'd... Good morning, James. It... Oh, bye. Good morning, ma'am. What is the officer doing at the desk? <laughs> Isn't it a little small? It is. Miss Christian, I I'd like you to meet my father, Officer John Dennis. Oh, uh, how do you do? Not too well. He seems to be stuck, ma'am. <laughs> so I see. Madam, I didn't come here to be laughed at. No, ma'am, he didn't. I'm really very sorry, Officer Dennis. But you must admit, seeing a policeman in uniform doing battle with a child-sized desk... Well, there's absolutely nothing funny. Nothing at all, and I'll thank you to stop laughing. Oh, James. James, perhaps you'd better get the janitor before... <laughs> before the bell rings and the children come in. <laughs> the janitor, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, the janitor, yeah. Don't stand there. The janitor, the janitor. Yes, sir. <laughs> I never heard what happened after I left, but when I'd returned with the janitor, the bell had sounded and the classroom was full of my classmates. My father had gone and the desk had been reduced to firewood and scrap iron. Miss Christian never mentioned the incident, but there was one strange impression that my fellow students had that day at school. They all thought that the teacher had found something very funny in the geography book. For each time she held a large volume up before her face, strange giggling noises could be heard coming from the vicinity of the desk. Well, I thought it over on the way home and decided not to mention it to my father. I don't think either one of us were very much in the mood for conversation that night anyway. Hello, Pop. Oh, Jimmy, I didn't see you. Oh, I thought I'd sit out here. It's cooler on the porch. You want to stroll over to Dobson's for a bite? Dobson's? Yeah, it's inexpensive, and, well, I don't want to take too much time. I... We've got some mending, some things to do. Yeah, okay, sure. Let's go to Dobson's. Doesn't make any difference to me. You know what I mean, Jimmy? We'll be having to take it easy on the expense this month because... Well, I'll be having to pay for a desk. And I want to get back early because I have to sew my trousers. You didn't have to say it, Bob. Well, I'm not going to beat around the bush with my own son. I'm sorry you didn't like Miss Christian. No. You know, you shouted pretty loud at her. No. I think you hurt her feelings. I hurt her feelings? Well, I thought you'd like to know. Well, thank you. You, you know, you always tell me... Any kind of a man can make a mistake, but it, it takes a big man to apologize. Apologize? Okay. Okay, you don't have to if you don't want to. She'll get along somehow. No, no, you don't have you to. You keep that up all night. All night. But I'm not a man to be bitten by the same dog twice. At least not in the same way. Okay. Nice evening, isn't it? Yeah. Turning out warm, good baseball weather. Another spring's just about here, I'd say. Pop. Uh-huh. Don't you like her at all? Say, uh, you wouldn't be trying to make a match, would you, Jim? <clears throat> uh, you know, I think you're right, Pop. Another spring's just about here. She's a handsome enough woman here, Miss Christian. Handsomest I have seen since... Well, since your mother passed away, Jimmy. But, well... I'd forget it if I were you. You see, you can lead a person to something. Sometimes you can even do a little thinking for other people, but you can never feel for them. No, even if I have a mind of, well, which I'm not. Circumstances be against it, Jim. So I'd just get it out of my mind if I were you. Just try and forget it. Well, I met with little success trying to forget my matchmaking. In fact, such little success, I finally gave up trying after a couple of hours. I remember lying in my bed that night with my eyes focused on the streetlight in front of the Merrick Coal Company. And there were a couple of thoughts that occurred to me. Of course, I remembered what my father had said. Circumstances would be against it, Jim. Just try and forget it. And I remembered a conversation Miss Christian and I had only the day before. You aren't going to let circumstances defeat you, are you, James? Oh, no, ma'am. And so I formed a plan. 
And the next day, I set my scheme to work. Say, Pop. Yeah, Jim? Suppose we might go to the park Sunday afternoon and hear the band concert? Band concert? Well, that might be pleasant. Yeah, that's a good idea, Jimmy. Yeah, that's what we'll do. You don't mind if I bring a friend, do you, Pop? Pleased to have one of your young friends along? Pleased to. Then after school, I stopped to invite my young friend. Miss Christian, my father would like to apologize for shouting at you the other day, and he... Well, he, uh... Yes? We'd like to invite you to join us for the band concert in the park Sunday. Oh, how very nice. James, you may tell your father I'd be delighted to attend with you. And by way of apology for my outburst, I'll bring a picnic basket. Do you think that would be all right? Oh, I sure do, ma'am. I think that'd be just the thing. And it looked as if everything would be fine that my efforts as a doer would be richly rewarded. That is, it looked that way till Sunday. I remember we were walking home from church and my father and I exchanged surprises. Looks like we're gonna have fine weather for the park today, huh? Yeah, perfect weather for a ball game, too. Guess you haven't heard, the Eagles and the Warriors are playing an exhibition game today, huh? Oh, yeah, that's, that's real nice. Guess who's got a box for that game, Jim, my boy? I don't know who. I have. You have? But, Pa... <laughs> a little surprise, huh? Just so happens that Councilman Flynn will be out of town for a while and he was good enough to give me the use of his box at the park. Sound good to you? But, but what about the band concert? Well, what about it? Well, this friend of mine... Some friend of yours would rather hear a band concert than watch the Eagles play the Warriors? As a matter of fact, Pop, I, I think she would. Certainly doesn't seem... What? D did you say she? Yeah, I did. And who might this she be? Miss Christian. After I told you to forget matchmaking. I'm sorry, Pop. That's not quite good enough, Jim. Well, she's even packing a lunch. Packing a lunch? <laughs> well, it looks like we're going to a band concert then, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess so. You've gone a little too far this time, Jim, and I want you to know I don't thank you for it. <laughs> you told we'd be here at one o'clock? Yeah, one o'clock. Well, most likely foolish being here on time. Chances are she's a half hour from being ready. Maybe not, Pa. Well, she'll be the first woman I ever knew. The... Mr. Dennis. James. Miss Christian. Hello, ma'am. Won't you come in? Oh, thank you. As my son was remarking, this lovely day for the park, Miss Christian. Or a ball game, Mr. Dennis. This is the picnic basket, James. Ball game, ma'am? Do you care for baseball? Oh, yes, yes, we do, don't we, Jim? We sure do. Oh, I did so hope you liked it, because, well, I have a sort of a proposal to make. Proposal? Yes, you see, I have a friend whose husband works at the ballpark, and I sometimes get a few tickets. Of course, they're usually way up in the bleachers, but... Oh, they... no, no, just a minute, Miss Christian. I, are you proposing we forego the band concert for the ball game? Oh, we really don't have to, Mr. Dennis. But with the Eagles playing the Warriors and McGinnis starting for the Warriors... McGinnis, starting? Hey, I, I hadn't heard that. Gee, that'll be fine, well, huh, Pop? Yes, I think that might prove to be just that, Jimmy boy. Oh, splendid. I had so hoped you'd approve. After all, we can take in the band concert together next Sunday. Well, as it happened, I have a friend or two with the Paul Park myself, so I don't think we'll be having to sit in the bleachers, Miss Christian. Jimmy, if you'll take the lunch. My arm, Miss Christian. A pleasure, Mr. Dennis. <laughs> Although the Eagles managed to eke out a 27 to nothing win over the home team Warriors, it was an excellent afternoon. There was only one faint note of discord during the whole afternoon. It was while we were walking home. It's been a nice afternoon, hasn't it? Fine, just fine. Due in no small extent to your excellent lunch? Well, I really felt I owed something more than words for my poor manners the other day. Poor manners? I'm afraid I can't hold your laughter against you. I must have been quite a sight in that disc. Well, I never did find out just why you came, Mr. Dennis. Oh, oh, that. Well, as a matter of fact, I wanted to discuss uh, Jim's daydreaming with you. Jimmy, you spend entirely too much time with, your, you know, your head in the clouds. And as I've told you, it's not fair to your charming teacher. What? But, Pop, you always... You know I'm right, Jim, my boy. Well, everyone should do a certain amount of dreaming, though. Where would the world be without its men of vision? As somebody once said, a dreamer lives forever, 
A toiler dies in a day. And so that was the beginning of the courtship of John Dennis. And as I told you a few minutes ago, my father and mother celebrated their silver anniversary just a few days ago. So you can see it was successful. And me? Well, I learned to be a doer. Of sorts, that is. But after all, where would this world be if people didn't dream a little? Now, here again are Pat O'Brien, Bobby Driscoll, Rita Johnson, and Stephen Dunn. Tony, I'd like to ask Rita's opinion of the young fellow that Bobby played in the story tonight. How do you mean, Pat? What's the matter? Don't you like the way I played him? <laughs> of course I do, Bobby. Because you did a wonderful job, just like you always do. No, I meant, well, what kind of a boy do you think he was? Oh, a very nice one, I'm sure. Of course, he did a lot of dreaming. And scheming. Yeah, but don't forget, he did a lot of doing, too. Yes, but did he accomplish what he did in tonight's story to make a match that turned out so well? You know, I got a hunch that young fellow must have known he'd need some extra special help. I bet that more than once he got down on his knees and prayed for that new mother he wanted. Well, of course, Pat. I think that's what Bobby meant when he said he did some doing, too. Prayer is doing, isn't it? Certainly is, Rita. And when you come right down to it, prayer helps us do the very things we were created for, to pay honor and homage to Almighty God. Yes. And just incidentally, Every time we pray, we do something for ourselves, too. Especially when we pray as a family. You know, I was just thinking, that couple in the story tonight who were celebrating their silver anniversary, you know, I, I bet they'd agree with the slogan of the family theater. It'd have to, Bobby. It's a fact. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you The Courtship of John Dennis, starring Pat O'Brien, Bobby Driscoll, Rita Johnson, and Stephen Dunn. The script was written by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present Hop, Skip, and Jump starring Benita Granville and Charles Ruggles. Join us, won't you? broadcast throughout the world and originates in Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.